Ringside Wrestling Podcast on the one and only 411 Podcast Network. It is hot outside, but it's even hotter inside. You are listening to the 411 Foresight Wrestling Podcast. I am joined today by Steve. How's it going? Well, it was fantastic up until, but we'll get into that. Okay. Fantastic. Live from the lab. Here we are. Live from the lab. Fantastic. And we are also joined by the one and only Holly. How are you today? Good. Okay. It's a lot cooler in here than it is outside. (laughs) Oh, it's nasty out there. Yeah, that heat advisory or something. Check your local listings. Yeah, I mean, this is Wisconsin, so I don't know how everyone else is doing, but I think we're all hanging in there. I heard like two-thirds of the country is getting baked this weekend. Like, well, let's fried. hope that if we go up north, it'll be a little cooler. Maybe you'll get out of the bubble there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was going to say, what do you mean by they're getting baked? <laughs> uh, with these temperatures, man. Oh. What are you thinking? You I was dirty <laughs> brain. <laughs> I was thinking something else. But yeah, anyway. I bet you were. Speaking of that, Extreme Rules can't was. take you anywhere. No, you can't. <laughs> what would your mother say? I met your mother this weekend. I just talked She's to her. She's a very lovely lady. She is a very lovely lady. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to Extreme Rules. And we got a couple other topics, and Steve's probably going to go on a rant so you may want to keep listening but we will get to that up first at the extreme rules kickoff show was a new intercontinental champion i read that that was impressive yes shinsuke nakamura who is my ringtone who is your ringtone defeated finn balor what do you think indeed i thought you know it was kind of sad to see finn lose the title but after like reading the thing that he's uh, asking for some time off it makes sense and it's awesome to see shinsuke get it i think shinsuke needs to be put up there in a in a more uh, he needs more of a spotlight yeah i think both guys would probably say that they could probably use a little bit more of a spotlight than this miss holly what did you think of finn balor losing the intercontinental championship (laughs) i didn't watch it okay well it makes a little bit more sense on the uh in hindsight with uh balor apparently requesting some time off right i mean everybody needs some time off and he'll be getting that in a little bit so i did not actually see this either we were all at the brewer game on sunday yep yep and i actually fell asleep because it was very warm that day too (laughs) i uh i dozed off a little bit later on but i also um have not gone back and watched this yet so i will see how that goes up next we had the cruiserweight championship no surprise kickoff show Drew Gulak defeated Tony Nias, and I always screw up Drew's last name, so my apologies. Gulak, Gulak, there it is. Think of, remember, remember eating back in the day goulash. Think of yeah, that. I love goulash. Yeah, goulash that was fantastic. Good right now. But throw a K instead of a sh. Gulak. Gulak. There you go. Yeah, there you go. So nice what do you job. think? What do you think? Um, I think it's well deserved. He's uh, like we were talking a couple weeks. He's got that grappling style that you don't see a whole lot of anymore. So it's kind of cool to see him get his due. I agree with that. Miss Holly, I know you're a big fan of 205 Live. <laughs> so what do you think of this latest development? She's purple brand all the way, man. Yeah, go purple. Sure. All right, so <laughs> let's just get to what we're really talking about, the main card here. Main card. The Undertaker and Roman Reigns versus Shane and Drew, no holds barred. This opened up the pay-per-view. What do you think of that? I thought it was a good way to kick it off. Um, uh, like I said, I did nap. I thought it started at 7 for some reason. I don't know. I had that in my Four brain. Four hours these I days. I know, <laughs> I know. But So I, I actually dozed off after the Brewer game. But I did read about it, and uh, it was nice to, to see a nice big match. Plus, you know, get Undertaker home to bed. I mean, he's probably tired. <laughs> First flight out of there. You know. <laughs> Back to Texas. First thing smoking. He was probably at home by the time the main event was happening, shaking his head at what happened. But anyways... Miss Holly, what do you think? The Undertaker and Roman Reigns ended up defeating and pinning Shane. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I was glad that Undertaker kind of passed down the reins to Roman Reigns. Oh, boy. We're Good starting pun. with the puns already. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's definitely nice to see Shane get the pin, and it's good to uh, keep Drew McIntyre protected because... He's the stud. I knew I'd, I'd well, get it out before you had a The chance. stud needed to be protected <laughs> before he lost to Cedric Alexander the next <laughs> night. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of what we figured. Shane would kind of take the loss, and then Drew could kind of weasel away and not be beat by either one. And then I thought the next night he'd come out and say, hey, Undertaker, you haven't beat me, but 
you know, that doesn't that wasn't even teased or anything. No, no. And apparently, you know, the rumor is that that match is not happening, but they've said that before. They keep saying it's not happening and maybe it's not maybe happening. Maybe it's not. I mean, maybe <laughs> Taker's just like, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, there didn't seem to be Need any sort of uh, little tease or foreshadowing of anything Undertaker it wasn't on Raw or anything and obviously Raw reunions coming up. We'll talk However, about that. However, it is early yet. There well, there is still time. Well, my favorite part was when Shane thought he had him down, and all of a sudden he just pops up, and Shane just looks down. <laughs> yeah, Undertaker did his usual sit up, yeah, and, and that then, classic, and then Shane, you know, freaked yeah. out, which is great. So, I mean, I put this idea out there before SmackDown because apparently Daniel Bryan had this big, you know, career announcement or whatever, career altering, yeah, yeah, and I figured it'd be going after Kofi, and it ended up being nothing. But here was my idea: if Undertaker's having a match. Why not Undertaker Daniel Bryan? Ooh. Yeah, so that, I didn't even think about that. That'll be stay tuned. So uh, Drew losing the next night to Cedric kind of tells me it's probably not going to be him and Undertaker. But right. up next we had Revival. They are still the Raw Tag Team Champions. What a match! Beating the Usos. Yeah, fantastic match. Those those guys. I mean, anytime that it seems like anytime the Usos are involved. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it seems that you're going to get a good, high-quality match out of it. And then just throw in that old-school tag team of the Revival. Yeah, that that had the makings of a classic, and I don't know, I liked it a lot. Good stuff, and I'm glad that the Revival pretty much did all this on their own. There was no Shane nonsense, or even if that is a loose connection between right. them, whatever. You know, Revival won and moved on, and I think that was the right call. Up next, we had Aleister Black returning to the ring finally. Yeah. Defeating Cesaro, I thought this was one of the highlights of the show. Absolutely. I mean, two insane powerhouses that are just ready to go at it, and they they put on a a nice spectacle to watch. Yeah, their SmackDown rematch was not quite as good, but the ending was probably more memorable with Cesaro getting kicked in the face, and then his mouth guard went flying out. Oh, really? (laughs) Very cool visual the way they did that. So either way— DVR that stuff. Yes, it was worth going back to look just for the ending of the kick and then his mouth guard. But Aleister Black won. I think we all expected that. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is kind of where Cesaro is going to be going forward. I hope that they don't, you know, forget about him or you know he gets lost in the shuffle. Hopefully, he gets to stay high profile and on TV at least. Because whenever he's on TV, it's always awesome. Yeah, I think we're a fan of both guys. So it'd be cool if one kind of shined on SmackDown and one shined on Raw. That'd be there fine with me. Up next, we had the Handicap SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, We all had Bailey. You two had her pinning Bliss. I had her pinning Nikki Cross. But either way, Holly, what did you think of Bailey still SmackDown Women's Champion? Good for her. Right on. I agree with that. It's good that, you know, this wasn't abandoned. She's still the champ after her Money in the Bank cash-in. Right. And it seems to be going forward, and not to kind of jump ahead a little bit, but, you know, it was announced on SmackDown that she will be facing at SummerSlam. Your pick of the year. <laughs> <laughs> My pick of the year. It's uh, Ember Moon, and it's about time, so I'm glad Bailey retained, and now she can be doing something like that. But kind of backtrack a little bit. Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. There was also no real follow-up with there this. There wasn't. I I, ex- I expected Alexa to turn on her or do something at that point because, uh, you know, that's just how— But maybe because we're all predicting that to happen, maybe they're going to drag it out just a little longer. Yeah, I thought the same with Owens and Jericho during their little feud right. their partnership. I know everyone loved the uh, Festival of Friendship or whatever. <laughs> that was great. But I also thought they did drag that on for months too long, and I did think that they teased it one too many times because every time they'd be about to fight, you know, they'd hug and you say, oh, we got you. We're not breaking up. And right. It did go on forever, but obviously they were just milking it till Mania. So I was expecting a little bit of uh, interaction between Nikki and Alexa, but there's absolutely nothing. And, I mean, Nikki lost, so Alexa, of all people, should be you know super upset over all this. And right. We got absolutely nothing. You so, lost my title. Yeah, you lost. You know, I didn't get I, – I didn't lose. So – the other story out of this was no Sasha Banks. No Sasha Banks at all. It feels like, you know, it wasn't even worth mentioning, but, you know, it it does seem, though, that her time is kind of drawing near to return. You'd think it'd be. I mean, there's all these rumors of contracts and, and talks and negotiations and things, up, you know, on the dirt sheets seem to be going well. So you're wondering, when is she going to come back? Yeah, and that was something I'd mentioned earlier, like Luke Harper and uh, Sasha Banks, and then even now Finn Balor, you know what? He asked for some time off, so it's like, cool, he has a good standing with the company, well-respected. 
didn't make a big show about it and, you know, whine on Twitter about crap. Right. And they're like, all right, you want a few months? Here you go. Fine by me. So, you know, that's the way it should be. So Braun Strowman defeated Bobby Lashley. Wow. Last man standing. What would you think? I thought that was pretty killer. Brutal. Brutal match, though. They were just, holy hell, it was beating out of them. <laughs> I thought it was a good, uh, as I call it, a big man brawl. Yeah. You know, obviously both can only move so fast and can only do so much, but when they're walking around the arena and doing crazy things, um, it makes kind of sense. And the way this uh, hindsight tells us is Braun Strowman has signed a new four-year deal. I read that. A lot of money going to him. Yeah, so maybe, again, maybe Lashley hasn't or maybe his deal or I don't know. But it seemed to me like there was you know too much going on for Lashley. Well, how old is Bobby Lashley? Oh, gosh, is he 40? Is he in his 40s? And he's 39. done. M- he, he's expressed that he does want to do some MMA still yet in his life. So, you know, maybe this last run with WWE was just to kind of, you know, put a little money in the bank <laughs> and get some training done and maybe conditioning for, you know, a uh, more physical uh, endeavor later on. Pad the wallet a little bit. You know? Miss Holly, what did you think of Ron Strowman defeating Bobby Lashley, last man standing? I don't know. <laughs> that's my answer for that that is a good answer so i hope you have a little bit more to say about our next match because this one lit you up like a christmas tree the new day are your new smackdown tag team champions called it she did let's give props <laughs> to holly she called it round of applause uh, yeah free box of bootios so they <laughs> defeat the our bootios it's a cereal they came out with new day had a, a cereal oh, years okay. ago they actually entered WrestleMania once in a giant box of bootios, and they tipped it over, and they came running out. They were the prize in the box. It was, yeah, basically. Oh, okay. It was fantastic. It's pretty clever. Entertaining. And then um, I think that was a Triple H idea. I remember watching oh, really? a Mania special on I think it was you know the look back of the years before. Yeah. The whatever it's called, the 24, I think it oh, is. Oh, yeah, right. The, the So yeah. they like had this big amazing plan like they're gonna come in on like a jet vehicle and xavier's like explaining this huge big thing drawing it out and explaining it in detail and showing diagrams and everything to triple h (laughs) for an idea leading up to the event and then he goes um yeah that all sounds great but here's our idea we want you to come out of a cereal box (laughs) and xavier (laughs) scrapped it all goes that's amazing (laughs) so just something i could see triple h saying but either way the new day defeated daniel imagine how much it would cost to rent jet packs or whatever he had (laughs) whatever he was like i forgot what it was i want to look it up now but they had some huge amazing idea but anyway daniel bryan and rowan are no longer tag team champs and of course heavy machinery were in there as well right yeah um fantastic match i thought it was a nice triple you know, uh, threat kind of thing, dynamic of the three teams going on. But, uh, I, you know, I'm kind of happy to see New Day. I know you are uh, not a fan, but uh, I, I did pick Heavy Machinery, though, so I was a little sad to see that not happen. Yeah, instead of the New Day, I always call them Yesterday. Miss Holly, the New Day. Go ahead. Yesterday? <laughs> well, you know, like yesterday's news, they're kind of old to me, so they're uh, Yesterday. I don't know. I just kind of picked a team and went with it. Yeah, I figured that was coming. <laughs> just kind of randomly pick, like, Ricochet has no chance against the Mojo and all that stuff. But anyways, um, I actually thought this was, I don't want to say match of the night because I actually liked the main event, and I really loved the Undertaker and Roman Reigns opener. I thought that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say it was a great match, maybe even, like, really good. Like, this match was really good, especially down the stretch with Daniel Bryan and Big E. Right. When he started slapping them and, you know, Big E fired up, and that that's some awesome stuff. And it is kind of a little hint of him as a solo star. Yeah, I could see it. I know I actually, he's obviously had in the past, but, you know, moving forward. I pegged him to actually be a world champion before now because there was a point where he was just on a tear. I actually thought that Kofi and Xavier were going to be like the tag team specialists, like almost oh, yeah. rocker style and all that crazy moves, and that Big E was going to be the big single star. Yes. That was my idea when New A first started up. There is always time for that. Exactly. So while I'm not going to go on a rant about the outcome, because now all of New Day has tag t- or not tag titles, they have all the titles. They got gold in the stable. They got gold. I'm not going to go on a rant, but I will say that the match was awesome, the ending was very cool, and no, I don't care for it. So the sooner we get new tag <laughs> champs, the better. Um AJ wow. Styles, speaking of new champs. We're gonna I'm gonna bring this tag thing up 
a little bit later. Hey, I've known who's got, been saying I've the tag a, divisions need a little. I know, but I've got a counterpoint on you. On hey, you. On me. Specifically. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Have I been pinpointed? Uh-oh. A little bit. Oh geez. A little bit. So uh AJ Styles. Stay tuned. Another new champ. He defeated Ricochet and I would almost call a minor upset. I was I was actually thinking that uh, Ricochet was going to take this one. New United States champ. Yeah, even with the club uh, out there and obviously the new heel stable, I mean, obviously you knew the company wanted to put a little backing on to right, him. Right, right. I just didn't think, you know, Styles doesn't need a title. The fans, you know, love him. and Right, and he always puts on great matches regardless of you know, he's the one of those. Yeah, I would say even by now he's a legacy star, almost Randy Orton. They don't, he doesn't need a title. Like right. John Cena can come back 50 times and get a cheer every single time. You don't need to make him the champ. AJ Styles, you know, great. He's the U.S. champ. Does it, like, elevate him anymore? I mean, it kind of does just because now he's got that extra accolade to throw on his resume. Now he's a this-many-time champ. Yeah, is it two or three? I think he's uh, one. I think it might be three. Him and Owens traded they it They traded a couple forth. of times, yeah. Yeah, which wasn't one on the fly or like one like changed. In yeah, it was on a, a it was on a, a live event. It was a live event. He won it. Oh, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I think so. I think but it was, it, like was the, it wasn't filmed. I saw I caught a clip of it on Twitter. Yeah, they, I think they did the the AJ special or the twenty the three sixty five or yeah something. something like that. They I know that it was it was it was a weird time like a couple of months where a couple of titles actually changed hands at live events. Oh boy. It was like over the course of like six or so months. It yeah, was they do that every so of, often. Yeah, it was really weird how it's just like, go jump, see us live. Go see us live, please. I think even William Regal sent out a tweet saying some of the best matches he's ever seen were yeah. at live events. I mean, it, they. I've seen, you know, when we went to a, way back when I went to a live event, and they just seemed like they were having a good time. There weren't any cameras going. There weren't announcers or promos that they had to give. They just go out and they did the match. Yeah, Holly, do you remember the live event compared to the TV event? Do you remember any of the differences? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Care to explain? Do you remember any of them? And want it, to talk? it the live event was more intimate as the TV event. You're more excited to be on TV. <laughs> right, right. Had a bigger feel. It's to it. the big lights. It's yeah. the constant videos airing. The right. live event was just match after match. But yeah, they had more fun, and you know, I would almost say the crowd was more into it. And I always mention this, but the Lucha House Party, everyone was doing that crap. Right, and, right. And they were cool. So I'm actually fine anytime they get TV time. My first live event, I saw Shawn Michaels face Mr. Perfect for the Intercontinental Title. Exactly. Like, <laughs> hello. How? And I got to see Yokozuna. <laughs> Uh, the smoking guns that yeah I think Bret Hart was even at that oh event. Oh my gosh! See no right there that's a live event. Oh right. it was amazing. I was I was like nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> nine years old. So what do you think of Ricochet? Is he gonna get the title back? I assume they're going one more at SummerSlam, or is this kind of now the AJ Styles show? But then again, it's like well then what happened to all this momentum Ricochet? Had? I think that uh, Ricochet is going to leave this feud with the title. And then I think the stable will go on to do other things, perhaps in the main event uh, or maybe a title picture where they, you know, take over. They do some type of, you know, craziness. I think the stable is going to move up from here, and I think Ricochet is going to hold down the U.S. title division for a while. Yeah, not sure if it's uh, known or not, but Ricochet is uh, pretty good buddies with the Street Profits, so I wonder if they're going to be brought in because they've been teasing. What a way to bring them in. Because they've been backstage and doing all that other, you know, hyping up crap, which seems like a waste right now, but what if that's the big debut? They come out, take out the club, and then Ricochet can win the title. Can win the title, exactly. I mean, that could have been the entire reason for the title change is to have this story, to bring the profits in in a uh, a real like something that you can accept type manner yeah I can't like think of a maybe word. they're yapping backstage and talking and then all of a sudden the club kind of like knocks their cup over and then right you know <laughs> and then you know uh aj and ricochet are having a one-off or whatever and the club tries to interfere and here comes the street profits it would it be acceptable that's something that you can envision and it's not like hey where'd these guys come from yeah, you know. it makes it makes sense in the long run, and I would be fine with uh, Ricochet getting his title we back. Be writers after the uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah after the uh, stomping grounds, you know, the moment with Triple H and all that, and then yeah. you know he's already lost the title. Right, exactly. So it didn't really seem to do much for me. But speaking of not doing much, but then for again, me, you know, think about Triple H's first title win. That was off of a schmaz ending, and then finally that second one was the one where he ran with it. Yeah, Triple H, who will be returning on the Raw reunion show this Monday night, but we will get to that. So Kevin Owens, 17 seconds. I thought it was less, but defeats Dolph Ziggler. It was a miss kick, stunner, match yep, over. Yeah, match over. 
It just seemed like a not. I don't want to say a waste, but it just kind of seemed like a reason for Owens to get out there and rant about Shane. I think it's that. I think Dolph is, you know, his he had kind of a short contract or something like that, just a couple of matches. So he wasn't. We knew he wasn't sticking around long. Um, they had to. They're progressing the Kevin Owens Shane storyline because obviously Shane was incapacitated, so he had the free mic to do whatever he wants. Yep. Um, it kind of, it, and I also heard that they're trying to keep these quote unquote B shows like under four hours or whatnot. So there, <laughs> there was gonna uh, be a rushed match here and there. Yeah, we had talked about that. I thought maybe it was gonna be the Alistair Black match. He was just gonna kick him in the head, and right? Just be impressive. But then again, this is also would be illogical knowing that what we know about Dolph and the, the you know him getting a promo. Yeah, and this match was even added on late. Right. And uh, Ziggler appears to be doing something with the Miz. He went on Miz TV and I forgot what he said. He insulted his wife yeah, or something. Yeah, insulted and his wife. I read. I saw that one. It just felt like, hey, here's two guys facing a heel. Uh, we need him to do something. Go out and insult the wife. Right. And brawl. <laughs> yeah, and then have a little thing. So maybe SummerSlam or maybe not. I don't know. Who really cares? And Kofi Kingston is up next. Wow, man. Well, that was my segue. Kofi <laughs> Kingston defeated Samoa Joe. Nine minutes. Still the yeah, WWE champion. Still a little quick, though. Yeah, a little too quick. Miss Holly, what do you think? Kofi Kingston and the New Day with all the gold. Um, Kofi is definitely strong enough to handle it. So. I mean, he proved it right there, didn't he? Yep. Yeah, um, I had mentioned this a few other times. I'd mentioned this during Kofi's rematch with Daniel Bryan. I mentioned this with Kofi matches against Dolph Ziggler, and even if you remember his match against Kevin Owens, and even the triple threat, if you remember when Ali was added. Um, it just doesn't feel like WWE Championship. It's, again, not the main event of the show, and you know nobody really bought into Joe really necessarily having a chance here, and Philadelphia, who's usually pretty loud, in case you didn't notice, we're chanting, we want Lesnar. <laughs> Mm. which we will get to. But, um, you know, for Kofi, the big fan favorite and the big story of the year, the underdog, all this stuff, for him to even getting, you know, a single percentage of chance for We Want Lesnar. That right. speaks volumes to me. And uh, it appears perhaps Randy Orton is going to... Is gonna, next. Is next, and I hope that results into something. Orton has a little history in Toronto at SummerSlam, but yeah. I would say, you know, World Kofi... title? Yep, he just needs something. I don't know what's going on with these challengers of the month, but it's not really doing too much, I don't think, for Kofi. He's not having a long-standing feud. Maybe this one with Randy Orton because they're both SmackDown. Maybe we'll actually see a little development out of that. Yeah, that's a good point. I, he he might need. I, I thought maybe Daniel Bryan because I, I think he does kind of need like a long-term something you can sink your teeth into. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I would say Orton wouldn't win the title, so it's just, what, another Kofi win, and then... And maybe it's some type of, you know, schmaz dusty finish or whatnot, or maybe Orton cheats and gets disqualified, so now he's like, well, I'm angry, and now we'll go to, like, a no disqualification, or, you know, he could add the stipulations, and Orton's always been kind of sadistic with that kind of stuff. Yes, as long as he doesn't rip his ear out with a oh, screwdriver. Oh, bad. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> Poor Jeff Hardy, but we won't mention him. All Uh-oh. right, moving on. We are fine. <laughs> That's a nice mugshot. That shot. should be his nickname, Jeff yeah. Mugshot Hardy. Wow. <laughs> uh, no comment. Anyways. Wow. Um, He's responsible for his own personal actions. Yeah, which is true, yes. regardless of what company you work for. Right. I know that statement always seems kind of cold. But, but I mean, it's not they their gotta, fault. Yeah, they got to do that. And, you know, I hope he's not in some type of, like, mental issue. I hope he finds help if he well he's it. always had the i forgot the word it is but uh when you depend on what's a dependency whatever he's always had yeah. to depend on either you know prescription pills right. or alcohol if you remember the dui oh yeah and the thing about it is sometimes i think bobby root has said this one of the reasons he left impact he didn't like the time off he didn't like recording over the weekend and then mm. having like a month off and then hey see you in another month in orlando at universal right he wants to be on the road he wants to be working he's in shape he doesn't want to get rusty and everything like that you know and and jeff hardy he hasn't even been on the road so maybe yeah. time off for him is not it's the best own, idea right that's his own worst enemy because right now there. it's like well how do i spend all these days and what do i do I might as well get drunk <laughs> get drunk and pass out in a, in a hall stairwell of, stairwell that's which it. you know come on who hasn't done that in, okay no, but, but. you're talking to the wrong <laughs> crowd there yeah let's move on i was gonna say something about straight edge but that would bring up the cm punk news today oh boy wait today 
Yeah, you didn't see this breaking news? No. Uh oh, we will add that to the list. You Please, because can... I had yeah, I haven't been on. I had a chiropractor. Let's just say you can do another checkpoint for me. So Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. This was winners <laughs> take all. <laughs> Winners take all. Yeah. Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans. Yes, Baron Corbin in another main event. Can you believe it? And yeah. Lacey Evans with the uh, word Seth on her trunks. We got a nice big close up of right. that one. Um, Definitely not PG. <laughs> it was uh, just under 20 minutes. Uh, Seth Rollins, obviously, and Becky Lynch, uh, they win. No no surprise there. No surprise there at no all. Surprise. I mean, Baron and Lacey weren't going to do it. It's just a matter of how are they going to lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we will kind of get to how they lost. But, Miss Holly, what do you think? Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch win the match. Well, Seth brought out his emotions, which I thought was kind of. That's true. Yeah. Baron hitting the end of days on Becky. That was. Uh, yeah, that was what I was going to bring up because uh, we had talked about this before the intergender thing. Yeah. Not really a fan of it. Yeah, I was a little shocked at that, that they even went that far. Yeah, the way they can do it, though, is they have to act outraged. Right. If they sit there and go, yeah, there you go, you know, it's, you know, or they act like it's no big deal. It starts to get callous and cold. But when even Corey Graves ripped on it, it was like, okay, now this is certainly unacceptable. Right, right. Even the heel announcer got into that. So, I mean, that was well done. Yeah, it it was, uh, I forgot what Brock was doing, but one time, like, even he attacked somebody who went too far, and even Heyman was, like, calling him off. Like, that was, like, how bad it was getting. Yeah. I forgot what it was, though, but, you know, that just put it over even more. And yeah, hits the end of days. Seth Rollins wasn't it Michael snapped. Cole, <laughs> <laughs> which we always love. Hey, Heyman would have said keep that's going. That's <laughs> the one good thing that Brock Lesnar has ever done was he gave Michael Cole an F five. That was beautiful. All right, all but. right. But <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, end of days on Becky and Rollins completely snaps, and the the three curb stomps to me, it's, you yeah, know, that was the he exclamation. Was mad. <laughs> that was it. Lacey got out of Dodge. She wanted right. no part of it. No part of that. <laughs> and uh, nice little bump on Becky's head for uh, that little chair mishap. Yeah. You don't throw the chair, Lacey. Come on. Come on, Lacey. Didn't you learn that? <laughs> right. I think it must have slipped out of her hand or something. It didn't look intentional, obviously. No, and Becky didn't even like flinch from Yeah, her. she was just like, bring it. <laughs> yeah, she uh, got her face broken by Naya, so she's fine. Yeah, she can handle it. All right, so we all know what happened immediately after the bell rang, so I'm going to duck out here. Steve is taking a drink, and <laughs> the floor will be yours, Steve. Go ahead. I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> I hate him. Like, we were talking off air, even from that podcast, if, like, that's the dude that he is, like, that guy just irks me in such a way. He is a waste of talent, a waste of space, a waste of money. When you get... He wrecked the moment. He wrecked it all. Yes. And that's what he does. He ruins everything. And I know he's playing this heel character and we're all supposed to hate him, but I seriously loathe this guy. Like... Every time he's got a title defense, it's the same match. It's the guy gets a little bit of offense, and you think maybe he's got a chance, and then Brock throws him around for a little while, and then F5 done, boom, it. Or maybe three F5s or six or whatever number they happen to come up with that day. It's always the same match. And what bugs me is you get upset with the New Day keep winning the titles, but you're totally fine with Brock winning title after title, taking his time off, being a crap champion, it's just, oh, Brock needs to go away. Rant over. Are you sure you're finished? Until next time. Until next time. All right, before I respond to that, Miss Holly, what did you think? Brock Lesnar came out, kind of crushed all over Rollins, and obviously the WrestleMania moment um, kind of, you know, right back to where it was. Um, I... Uh, he wrecked the moment for Seth. That's all I got to say is he wrecked that moment where it would have been a good moment for him to go check on Becky to make sure she was okay. But, of course, he had to step in and ruin that. Yeah, there was a small, quick little moment where uh, the music hit. Obviously, the announcers were like, well, Heyman's lied before. We don't know. And then when he came out, there was a small little moment that I thought was great was Rollins looked over. He looked over real quick, and, you know, Becky was obviously hurt from the end of days. He quick looked over, but Brock was already rushing the ring. So he was thinking of Becky. So do you have any more to say? No. 
Mama told me if you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. So. Yep. <laughs> all right. So I suppose I will away. counter that New Day point because I, I enjoyed yeah, the ending. Yeah. I uh, I warned last week, if you weren't a fan of Brock, get ready. He was, uh, yeah. So I know they had to because he had the contract and he knew it was going to happen. He knew it was coming at Just, some point. I, ugh. And um, I will say he was on Raw. Yeah. <laughs> and he's been announced for this week's Raw. Yeah, well, who hasn't? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently The Rock and Cena won't be there, but Cena I'm oh. not sure about. Really? It, uh, I don't Cena know. may be in London filming, but with him you just, you know. The just, Rock has a tendency to show up when you least expect it. Especially if he was at the Performance Center this week. Yeah, and had, didn't he do that one thing where he was, like, somewhere across the country and, like, flew in, like, overnight, like, yeah, he had hosted um, Saturday, Night, Saturday Live Night Live in New York on Saturday night, obviously, and then the next day was WrestleMania with Ronda when he did the. That's right. That's right. And everyone was like, "No way, he can show up!" And even uh, Ronda did that for Rumble because she oh, was in yeah. Brazil the morning of. But that was just transparent as all could be. I know we all knew it was going to happen, but she was in Brazil the morning of. I mean, so that was kind of impressive. Yeah, Long she had flight. flown and got out of there and was posting like old pictures of on the on set and stuff. Right, and. Dang it, I just forgot my point. <laughs> uh, we were talking New Day. You were going to counterpoint my aggression. Yeah, but I was thinking of something before then. But anyways, yeah, The Rock, um, if he was at the Performance Center, you know, maybe he was running the robes. Right. And, you know, so, you know, if it's in Tampa, I think he's, is he from Miami, I think? Yeah. Or, you know, so maybe if that's where Raw is, but dang it, I forgot my point. But anyways, for the counterpoint, I was just going to say, um, if I asked you right now who the New Day defeated for their last tag titles. Okay. Daniel Bryan and Rowan. <laughs> oh, come on. You The previous. previous. <laughs> well, before I, that. Uh, the Usos? Right. So you don't know. So th- if I have to ask you who they beat for the ones before then. Okay. So you have no idea. See, the, all the brains have meant nothing. That's my point. If I ask you their great matches, you're going to point out to the, ru- the Usos, Usos, right? Right. Right. And they had good stuff with Daniel Bryan and Rowan once. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's my point. With Brock yeah. Lesnar, it's AJ Styles, it's Finn Balor, and yes, it's Seth Rollins, and we even got the Goldberg. I know it wasn't for the title at first, but it, we even got the Goldberg clash. So there's always something with him that's always somewhat different. I know we're getting the rematch at SummerSlam, which honestly I'm not a fan of, but I guess we can kind of talk about that a little later. So with Brock, it's always a little bit more, and even with Ronda, which, uh, by the way, speaking of Ronda, yeah. you see what WWE wrote? They have a video, and they wrote an article on their website about, um, do we miss Ronda? And I thought, really? Gee, that's incident timing. Yeah, with, right. uh, I'm pretty sure uh, somebody <clears throat> wrote about that, and we talked about it last week. You getting royalties? <laughs> <laughs> Not from WWE. <laughs> so um, that was Extreme Rules. Um, overall thoughts? It was really good right up until the end. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. All right. I uh, enjoyed it. I had a good. Uh, my network connection was really spotty. Um, I actually had to like it. It had kicked in like a couple of matches and actually spoiled a match, uh, the Kofi's Joe match for me. But then it went back and I got to watch it. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was really spotty for me. But overall, I liked the show. I thought it was a good time. I agree. It was actually probably one of the better shows of the year, if not for a while. Yeah, for a B show, it, they they performed well. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I know it was a B show. I wrote this in my four one one mania dot com column. Cheap plug there. I uh, I I wrote that you know they didn't treat this as a B show at all. No, they, they really didn't. They gave us I think it was four new champions. They gave us a money in the bank cash, and whether you liked it or not, it's a major moment. They had right. they had a Brock Lesnar appearance. We got the um, new AJ Styles United States champion, and we even got an Undertaker match. Right. So they didn't treat this as anything in July. <laughs> yeah, in July before SummerSlam, they didn't, right. you know, they didn't take this one off at all. So I actually commend them for it, and yeah, it ended up being pretty good and kind of sets the stage for SummerSlam. So we know a few things for SummerSlam so far. Yep, looks like Seth Rollins we'll be going and, to Canada, baby. Yeah, I think it's Toronto where I'm sure Owens will Renee face Young. Shane. Yeah, yeah, Renee Young. Renee Young's from there, unless she brings her hubby with. I Uh-oh. think. Um, uh, Shane and Owens, right? That's going to happen? Oh, it's got to. I mean, at least something to that effect. Yeah, Owens, I would assume, gets the big 
victory over Shane? You'd hope so. I mean, <laughs> that that would be furthering the storyline if they want to keep him in the, you know, unless, well, I mean, it's SummerSlam, so it's a big show. So I don't think that they would let the Shane Owen or Shane take over, you know, or whatnot. Yeah, I, my, I can't see that happening. My thing, though, is, you know, if they want to do another Canada screw job or bring that up from the past for the millionth time. <sighs> You know, here we go, Toronto screw job and Shane rings a bell or something stupid like that. I mean, that. think of the chance. You screwed Owens. Yep. And then Owens could be even more of a face after that. But right. Hopefully not. I would assume we get a stunner and actually a, a good stunner. And then go from there. Um, we don't have an Undertaker match. Not yet. It's I'm, early yet. It's I'm, early yet. Outside of my Daniel Bryan idea, I'm struggling to think of anyone else because clearly the stud Drew McIntyre ain't getting it if he's going to lose to Cedric Alexander. Or maybe he is. Maybe he'll wrap up the Cedric thing, get a quick win over him, and then as he's beating the heck out of Cedric because he finally beat him, the lights go out. Go yep. Raw reunion. Yep. Yeah, see? I, I I do think he probably will destroy Cedric this week. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking he's a little mad. <laughs> and, and take it right back. Um, we also have, it looks like Orton and Kofi, but nothing confirmed. We kind of talked about that yeah. earlier. Um, I, I could definitely see it, and that does have the potential of, of having a decent match. And, you know, if, if they want to prolong the storyline, finally got two guys on the same show, it seemed to make sense to progress those guys forward. Yeah, and if we want to talk long term, they have a stupid history together from about 10 or so years ago. The uh, When he was Jamaican, yeah? <laughs> Jamaican me crazy. So, um, Brock Lesnar, <laughs> uh, Seth Rollins, I'm not too much of a fan of this, honestly. I'm not sure what you even do here because... Make him lose make him lose right Done. but, but we got that can in, go vacation <laughs> with a cactus with a cactus so then <laughs> but i my only issue with that is we saw that at mania if they were going to go with the rollins show i mean they did but now we're back to the brock party and the, oh my God. so they're going to go back the brock, party. the brock party so then we're gonna what uh, is, nothing. That, is that bad yeah it's horrible so then what rollins wins again okay so then what Okay, so then what if he doesn't? What if Brock retains? So then well, where do we go from there? He's going to take his time off anyways. Well, that's where then maybe they could lead to the Fox premiere and he could take over both shows and say, you know what, now oh. I want Kofi's title. And then they could really start something. And I was actually thinking maybe Braun was going to get something going with this or even Lashley. I mean, it seemed like somebody else, but you know, if they want to get rid of uh, the Rollins rematch, him winning the Battle Royal on Raw. And actually, it almost seemed like Roman Reigns was being set up. Yeah, I could. Yeah. The way that Paul introduced them all, like he was even uh, the little compliment he gave to Cesaro, the one that I hope wins. Yeah. So are we teasing another or maybe? Well, I mean, he's going to be the producer, though. He's not going to be on TV. So he can't be a Paul Heyman guy. Yeah, I find it interesting. You know, everybody loves Heyman and all this stuff. And as I tweeted on, I think, Sunday night or Monday morning, whenever I tweeted it, but. You know, everyone thinks Heyman's his genius and God and everything, and it's like, well, who did you think he wants as champ? Right. Yeah, well, Brock that. Was, you know, <laughs> like, uh, was he really going to sit there and make you know Ricochet Universal Champ day one? Or that's yeah, that'd like, be great. It's like he was clearly going to make it. his monster Brock Lesnar. <laughs> and uh, moving on with the SummerSlam card, uh, yeah, you mentioned it, uh, Ember Moon. Bailey, I'm not sure Ember Moon will win, but I will be rooting for her. Absolutely, I mean it'd be a nice match. It, I think it's. I hope they showcase their talent and they get the time to do so. Um, yeah, I really don't have a dog in this one. I really kind of would see, I'd love to just see a great match and whoever, maybe the best woman win. Yeah, I, I agree. And then regardless of who wins, a handshake after. I don't think uh, Sasha will get involved, and I don't think she's really needed. So that can be another month of rumors. And unless she's coming back as a heel. Uh oh, post match mm. turn. I mean, it is SummerSlam. They're supposed to. This is one of the big four, you know. Yeah, if she was going to return, you know, that would yeah, this be would the be time. A time. Um, speaking of the SummerSlam, and then she could challenge Bailey. Oh, there you go. And we get the wild card rule. <laughs> Does that even exist anymore? Probably not. So the SummerSlam card may continue with Finn Balor if he's taking time off now or after <laughs> SummerSlam. <laughs> yeah. But who could he be facing? The one and only the Fiend. Bray Wyatt finally appeared. What a way to appear. Music slows down. Everything goes nuts. I mean, the mask is on. I would like to see it if, like, when he's in the the arena, like, for competition, he's in that character. And when he's doing promos or, like, pre-recorded, he's 
you know the happy go lucky guy so we kind of get a nice different a and b type character yeah i thought the uh re-debut whatever you want to call it i thought it was very well done i had been talking about forever of how they were going to do this in the right. arena and you know they got around it it almost reminded me of sanity with the lights everywhere right, and you yep. couldn't really see anything but they you know stop it enough where you know what's going on you know it's every time the lights went down something like musically but you know, you know yeah. like a circus dying or something it was, <laughs> it was awesome yeah and i saw somewhere um that this is we're back in fall 2017 okay balor is feuding with wyatt right brock is champ aj is u.s champ and New Day are tag champs or something. Like, all the champs are the same from, like, almost two years ago or something oh, wow. weird like that. It's something like that. But um, what do you think of Finn Balor being the first? I thought right away that perhaps it'll be Demon versus Fiend. That's kind of what I was thinking. Like, uh, he, so he's taking time off at uh, at after SummerSlam, more or less. So we got a couple of weeks to build this up. So he's going to do something next week, obviously. And then uh, maybe they'll get back and forth, and we'll have a Demon versus Fiend. And obviously, Fiend is going to... Yeah, there was, a, there was a story that uh, Demon would not be at SummerSlam, and Finn Balor may already be back home in Ireland. So oh, really? I don't know if this is leading to a SummerSlam match or not, but you know, it would be something because I think Demon may have lost once in NXT. I don't know if he lost in WWE, so maybe Fiend taking him out would be that much bigger that right. they can forever say he's the one who... You know, defeated. defeated the demon, yeah. and then when Bray comes or when Finn comes back, he can be like, "All right," or maybe he gets defeated as the man, comes back in two months as the demon. He goes to you know to, oh, to find himself. I like that. I like that. Um, do you have any things that you want to see at SummerSlam? Anything that stands out right now? I'd like to see an Undertaker thing. I mean, because some you know he that's almost the second biggest show if you you know royal rumble leads to mania so then in the middle of the summer we got SummerSlam. so uh they always kind of go a little all out and it'd be nice to see taker at SummerSlam a little bit and then of course bray wyatt i'm real excited to see that go on yeah i'm excited now the next step is how in the world are they going to pull that off with a match right and I don't want to say they'll do it, but if you remember when Sin Cara showed up, they kind of like <laughs> dimmed the lights or whatever. Yeah, that was so weird. And then they kind of stopped. It was all and, red. Like, and then he lost. And yeah. It was. I remember, I think he was facing Dolph Ziggler, and Dolph even like looking like, what's going on? Or Kevin Owens, maybe. It was, but it was like, what's going on with the lights? I think it was an impact, the menagerie. They were like a circus carnival type okay. act kind of thing. During their matches, like, They'd have like the jugglers and the guy oh, in the really? unicycle going around the ring, and there'd be circus music playing. And I'm pretty sure they lasted like a month and were yeah. never seen again. So, you need a fire breather. <laughs> I think they may have had one of those. I wouldn't doubt it. Wouldn't put anything past Impact and Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> hey, Jarrett's in uh, WWE. I know. <laughs> That's why I don't put anything past him these days. <laughs> he's the mastermind of the fiend. He's got, he's got something up there. He's got something. We don't know what, though. By the way, speaking of Jarrett, uh, I think China is getting her first action figure they announced today oh, really? at uh, Comic Con. Uh, Mattel was announcing crap. And uh, I think China was one of them. So well, congratulations. After the Hall of Fame, I guess, you know, I guess they feel they can kind of start doing more. So. Right. They can bring her back a little bit. So, do you have any thoughts on Evolve and All Elite Wrestling on Saturday night? I watched Evolve, my first ever Evolve show. I thought it was pretty good. I tweeted a little bit about it. I enjoyed. Uh, you know, Riddle and Gul- Gulak. <laughs> oh, boy. Gulash? Gulak. Gulash, Gulak. Gulak. Okay, that sounds like a good meal or something. <laughs> Gulak, Gulash. A Russian delicacy. Yeah, so that match was awesome, as you'd expect. Obviously, Adam Cole defeated uh, Tozawa. Baby. Yep, and then, uh, you know, Gargano gave the big emotional speech. I thought the uh, no-DQ women's match was awesome. Uh, very, uh, I don't want to say scary, but some of the high risks that were taken during that match were uh, a little bit ridiculous. Paul Heyman got a big um, emotional moment. Um, and even uh, we got a Baba Tunde sighting. Baba Tunde, that guy. Doesn't he have like a six-inch vertical leap or something like that? He just goes straight up. I don't know, but poor Colby Carino, he got uh <laughs> Did he get destroyed? He got destroyed. Just murdered. But I got the... Uh, I got my star of the night with Shotzi uh, Blackheart, uh, her versus Brandy Lauren in that match. I would say go back and watch that, if anything. Just a no-DQ brawl between two women. It was awesome. So I hope at least a few of them uh, get some contracts from WWE or NXT or 
anything. I hope they uh, all went out, and there was no pun there, but they all went out there, and they delivered a great show. And I did not see Fight for the Fallen, but um, I would, you know, it seemed more favorable towards Evolve than anything. Yeah, it seemed like there was more press around the Evolve thing. Um, I even, yeah. Never mind. Uh oh, <laughs> nothing. All right, we won't touch on that. So, uh, any fight for the fallen? Uh, any thoughts? You know, the Young Bucks fought the Brotherhood, and uh, right, obviously they they want it now. Lucha Brothers, Kenny Omega won. Yeah, and uh, now Lucha Brothers want Young Bucks on a ladder at All Out. That'll be ridiculous. Yeah, that'll be um, high flying and probably a few broken bones or two. <laughs> oh, something or other. But uh, and definitely for a good cause, they donated a big check to. To victims of gun violence. Yeah, we talked about this on Sunday, but uh, oh yeah, you know, uh, WWE gets ripped on for promoting their uh, you know donations and charity work, and yet right. here they are waltzing to the ring with a giant check and talking about that, and yet you know AEW right now is the golden child. So right, but we were we were uh, talking about that, and I guess there was some shots subtly taken at WWE and you and I are kind of in agreement that okay you know you had your first pay-per-view take your shot at WWE or you know your former employer whatever you want to do now it's time to stand on your own it's time to stop being petty and taking little pot shots at each other now it's time to show what you can do now that you're further disconnected from that whole arena yeah I do like the uh cool thing they did this week was uh Tully Blanchard yep. is going to be like the advisor or whatever oh really for Sean Spears and if you remember the Rhodes, so Rhodes right. and now Blanchard. Yeah, Tully was uh, four horsemen. Right. Yeah. And the other part of that is uh, Tessa. Tessa right. Blanchard is an impact, and it's no secret AEW wants her. Yeah. When she uh, her what deal a with way impact. to sweeten the pot there. So that seems a little bit uh, there, and I also. Uh, I noticed something. A lot of people were ripping on Evolve for quote unquote like you know stealing their thunder or like running opposite. Well, there was a report right. this week. You know that stuff was already booked well in advance. Yeah, All the th- we know that the the drama came from that WWE was going to showcase it on their you know just to kind of counter it. Yeah, and you know it's always funny because you could easily flip it and say, wait a minute, it wasn't Evolve that were stealing their thunder. Why isn't anyone saying? <laughs> AEW was doing Evolve's Thunder on their anniversary show. Yeah. I it, mean, it could go both ways. It's the perspective, again, um, right now it just seems AEW you know, is the fan favorite, so they're going to get uh, the benefit of everything, even right. if it could easily be flipped the other way and go like, well, wait a minute, they're stealing the Evolve's anniversary show's Thunder. The internet is very opinionated. <laughs> So I hear. By the way, speaking of that, I have this new column on 411mania.com. <laughs> And basically at the beginning of the year, I don't know if you heard the podcast, it was in January, and I wrote the column, and I made 20 bold predictions, okay? Okay. And so far, almost all of them are pretty much coming true. Oh, my. You know, a lot of them about, um, I actually had Roman Reigns returning this year. Okay. A lot of people thought, you know, he's done for at least a year or two, you know? Right, right. I had, um, you know, Bray Wyatt would change his character. Okay. I felt, obviously, he had kind of run his course. Needed it. Yeah, I think I remember hearing some of this. Yeah, it was, um, well, anyways, I won't bore you with it, but the number one thing I wrote, and we kind of talked about this with the uh, the hooded mask GTS. Okay, right. And the top That's one was right, yeah. CM Punk would return to do something wrestling related. Yeah, right. So, it was announced earlier today. <laughs> I'm looking at you now. You don't know. No, I do not know. I haven't been on the internet most of the day. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Well, Holly's totally ready. She's on her phone playing a game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if she knows who CM Punk is. Do you know who CM Punk is? No. Okay. He lives in Milwaukee. Again, folks, casual fan right there just said she doesn't even know who CM Punk is. So, ouch. Okay. CM Punk was announced for StarCast. Really? In Chicago, All Out Weekend. Hmm. He will be doing a, I think it's a one-hour live mic type oh, autograph wow. or one-on-one interview type thing. I don't even know what they called it, but... Something wrestling related. Something wrestling related. He already did an interview with Sports Illustrated and said he does about one or two of these a year. And yeah. he always likes to do something with the fans. If you remember last year, he did a Pro Wrestling Tees autograph session. Okay which was down the road from where, you know, the event was in Chicago. Yeah, right. So, obviously in the area. So, he was going to do something like that, but he always played it up as, well, it's not official. And technically, StarCast is not 
affiliated with, with AEW. AEW, right? They just happen to be doing mm. stuff on the same weekend. Yeah, with a lot of the same people. <laughs> a lot of the same people. <laughs> so, well, since you're all going to be here, might yeah, as well. Yeah. So, um, what do you think of that news? Um, go him. You know, if he wants to do it, because I mean. <sighs> His character, his talent, his technique, he's fantastic. He's a great performer. We all know that. That's not a question. The question is, is this what he wants to do? Is he just teasing? Is he having a good time? Either way, it's good to see him. You know, That's actually one guy I would have loved to have met just because he seemed like a real down-to-earth kind of dude. Yeah, it was uh, specifically noted, which obviously it would in case there was a surprise. It was specifically noted it would be for that and not for all of Right. Them. So the question is, does this make him more likely, or is this saying, well, if he's doing that, there's no way he's now going to show up because, you know, that kind too of— Too obvious. Too obvious. He's already going to be in town and all I that stuff. I could see it either way. But then I again, Bret Hart, Bret Hart was, you know, a part of it, and then he showed up for the title. Right, right. But this is obviously CM Punk. Like, you know, John Moxley wasn't going to do a signing with the company before. They wanted the impact of him showing up. Right, exactly. So if anything, this makes me think, no, this is truly a one-off setting. It could be. And- it wouldn't surprise me if it was. It wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't. Um, I I actually had thought, and I think when he first like walked out, and like the kind of the story had broken out that he was just unhappy and he was you know leaving the company. Um, I tweeted like because that following week or whatever was when the first and the loudest CM Punk chants were going wild. And I had said, like, I'm not saying, I tweeted him, I think. I was like, you know, I'm just not saying that you should come back. You know, if you don't want to and you're not happy, obviously change your life. But at the same time, I hope you understand how much the fans really, you know, dug what you did and that you appreciate the fact that we're all, you know, hey, we miss you. You know, you were awesome. You did a great job. If that's done and over with, cool. You know, I'm fine with that. But just so you know, you were awesome. Right. And I hope you appreciate that. Yeah, I would say, um, I mean, he better be doing something because All Out also just announced their pay-per-view price. And it will, again, be (laughs) $49.95. That's standard. At least it's not 60. I mean, 60 was... Standard. Well, 60 was what... WWE is, I mean, beyond that at this point. Right, but I mean, 60 was what, you know, your standard WrestleMania stuff was going for. And so $49.95 is usually what you'd get for those types of shows. So, I mean... Yeah, I would still mention though we're in 2019, and uh, get a streaming. You can service. get six months of Netflix for that price, right? So, exactly. So I would uh, almost say not. But moving kind of down the line here of this new stuff that I'm looking at, um, apparently Eric Bischoff still has not started with. Smackdown. I read that he was not present, which everybody thought was you know this was the reset moment at Extreme Rules. Now come Monday and Tuesday, let's press the go button. Yeah, and apparently he's now either started or something in the offices or something. But the other uh, weird part about it is moving forward now, um, his role, I don't, it it just says kind of what we had talked about. He's more of going to be kind of like the middleman between Fox and Vince. But then it's like, well, Vince clearly knows the TV. You know, he doesn't necessarily need Bishop, but he's right. I don't know, it's almost like kind of like the buffer type, kind of like a buffer in Could between. Be. Maybe Bischoff knows how to put things better to Fox, and they can filter Vince's crazy. <laughs> 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 well, we got to do this. Well, this is what he's saying, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to clean up the mess? Is I mean, if saying? Vince can't handle sneezing, how is he going to handle talking to Fox executives on a billion-dollar deal? Yeah, and uh, AEW is uh, most likely October 2nd, which we had talked about okay. before. And that would be a Wednesday. Well, that well that makes sense. I mean, then they don't got to worry about the NBA and and it would be the uh, whatever the days uh, two days before SmackDown went to Fox. So I'm not sure if they're trying to steal that thunder or if they want to be like, hey, we we move first. I don't even like know what know. the point of that is because I thought if they went to Tuesdays, it would make sense to start that week, right? You know, to take that audience, but that doesn't make too much sense. Moving down the line here, we have uh, there will be another WWE Network live event special. Okay. It's going to be a week from Saturday, I believe, or yeah, a week from Saturday. It'll be called Smackville. It's a SmackDown live event from Nashville. Weird. Yeah. For what? (laughs) Well, remember how they did the Shield and they just did the end of the live event? That's all they're doing here. It'd be Kofi, Dolph, and Samoa Joe. Well, they did that with a couple of other things, too. It's just weird. I mean, no reason? Just, hey, let's do this? Yeah, I don't know. This almost makes me think um, because two days before that, they have their uh, 
conference call for the, mm-hmm. you know, the quarterly, all that good right. stuff. So I don't know if that means like they're going to try to bump their numbers immediately up or if they're going to have more of these events. Maybe they're trying to pad the network subscriptions. Hey, get this, and you get this yeah. weird thing that you'll never see again <laughs> or never thought you'd see before. Yeah, if they were trying to bump numbers, I don't know if Smackville is. I mean, <laughs> they're doing whatever they can, right? Uh, moving down the line, uh, Kevin Owens has apparently been uh, off script. He's been doing his own thing with these really? promos. Which isn't too surprising. Some guys have earned the bullet point treatment. I agree. I agree. And if you prove it over time, they at some point pretty much do say, you know, do your thing. Go for it. Rip on Shane. Be done in five minutes. Don't get us in trouble with the FCC. (laughs) Here's kind of the idea that we have for a story. Go. Yeah, and I think, I mean, Owens is smart enough. Owens is good. He's been doing it for a long time, even in Ring of Honor and the stuff he was able to control, you know, keeping in line with regulations but getting his point across. Yeah, and even uh, with the – he's a family man. He's not going to go out and get fired or do something stupid. And Owens is a smart guy, and he's a great talent and a great character. So it's going to be awesome if he's really doing this on his own. That's even better. Yeah, there's been a lot of stories. I don't know if you saw this, what he did with the ROH fan. Yeah, didn't he take? He invited him like front row or something, wasn't it? Yeah. So the RH fan uh, feels he got screwed at the show. We're not going to get into that. That's a whole mess in itself. But right. He reached out to him, direct messaged, and pretty much said, you know, next show here, there'll be tickets waiting for you. Yeah. Yep. That's sure what enough. Was. He did it, and there's been stories of him kind of doing that thing yeah. for a while. Like, so. He's a stand-up guy. He's awesome. Very cool guy. And I was going to say he's he one can. I'd like to meet. Yes. Absolutely. He uh, can do all that stuff and stay in the PG parameters. Right. Because even his tweet of saying, these are some guys not on the show, but Shane is. He didn't use any foul language. None. He didn't say any, like, any but lewd boy, comments. But, boy, he got his point across. <laughs> he got the point across. I mean, that and... list of stars was just a massive page, and then, but Shane is. But Shane is, and that's all you needed to do. So uh, glad Owens is getting a little bit of trust here. And right. he's finally getting that face run that he probably should have got before uh, the Kofi Kingston got on fire at Mania. Yeah. Makes me wonder if Owens maybe was going to beat Daniel Bryan for the title at Mania. Cause Who knows? Because that was the original idea, apparently. Right. So, um, we're going to end it here, uh, well, end this little portion with some uh, SmackDown Fox notes. So apparently uh, this is the new report. SmackDown will have 51 episodes a year. Okay. The one episode preempted will be uh, for the World Series. Okay. Which makes sense. Right. It's Fox. I think it goes 16 to 20 million viewers a week, so it makes sense, and it's possible that week they would just be on FS1. Okay. Um, the other thing is in late September, there's going to be a one-hour launch show, kind of to like a little preview almost mm-hmm. to introduce mm-hmm. the Fox audience, if that makes sense. Yeah, kind of warm them up a little bit. For I what would they're going to be seeing. Yeah, I don't want to say it's like a clip show, but, you know, Fox isn't airing too much on uh, reruns on Friday night. So basically any kind of rating, anything will be better than what they're getting. Right, right. Um, and, I mean, they're going to have the whole WWE crowd, so that's going to be a big boost for them on that time slot. Yeah, and uh, the next part says that they do want NXT. Really? So if it's not Fox, it'll be FS1. But besides the studio show Tuesday... They want NXT in some form. Hmm. And back to my bold predictions, one of mine was NXT would stay on WWE Network all year. Right. And it has. And I don't know. I think uh, it's going to be tempting if they get another couple million. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. And if Fox really wants it, you don't want to upset your new boss right away. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, if they're writing checks, why not give them the product? Yeah, if Fox wants NXT, I think. I mean, I know the network thing and the takeovers are amazing. Right. But, you know, sometimes you got to do things like what that. What if they did like a like an offshoot, like, you know, another division of NXT or another NXT show, you know? Yeah, Keep I don't... Keep the one you got on the network and... Yeah, I would just be afraid, like, if they gave NXT UK or something, like... Yeah. I mean, who's going to watch it, honestly? <laughs> I don't know. If it's on Fox... You give them the prime NXT, right. you know, then that's a great thing, but if it's like... Pete Dunn's awesome, though. Here's a, he is, but if it's like here's another form of NXT and then it's schmo after schmo and it's right, like, right. Oh, okay, I'll just stick to the actual NXT. <laughs> or maybe the WWE Network gets the up and comers, the ones that aren't ready for the main spotlight yet. Yeah, I always maybe say, there's like a NXT B show and an NXT main roster. Yeah, or maybe you know two hours, or they do a brand split of their own in right. NXT. Yeah, I don't know something like that. But I always think of NXT in two forms. I think of the TV product and then the performance center. Right. So there's two different kinds there. The next part is that Fox wants everyone at the network to promote WWE as a legitimate sport. 
So if you don't already know, they have the NFL, they have college football, they have MLB World Series, and Fridays will be WWE. So right. in between that big, long sandwich, uh, they're promoting it as, you know, it's the sports network pretty much. Yeah, I mean. So how will that go? <laughs> good luck, because didn't, didn't we try this before once a while back? I think they've tried it, but obviously with the studio show and, you know, the Fox platform, I guess we haven't seen. We haven't necessarily seen how they'll present it. So maybe we've seen what WWE has in mind, but, you know, Fox may be like, yeah, screw that. Here's our idea. And then it comes off amazing. Right. It could be. I mean, maybe that's just further proof that Vince needs to think about. Hey, XFL's coming. Don't worry. I know. So the uh, the next part says that uh, in mid September there's going to be a huge uh, you know a push for SmackDown coming and I guess I don't know this article says it's going to be it's going to involve the WWE superstars in a moving truck or something and they're going to go to like different markets I don't know if they're actually going to go to different arenas or if they're just going to pop up on like the affiliates in each city or uh, I don't know that's... I don't know how yeah with a moving truck they, yeah that's weird. I could have sworn they did that already with like Sci Fi and USA. Like, weren't they all like moving? I could have sworn like when SmackDown moved, they did this moving promotion. I know they did that when uh, they abandoned primetime wrestling and went to Raw. They started taking down the set and taking apart the whole place. But that was back in 92, I think. Oh, gosh. Um, the next the part. Year I was born. Oh, God. <laughs> you woke up, Holly. <laughs> thanks. Um, thanks for making me feel old. Appreciate that. <laughs> The next. Yeah, I'm still. I'm still here. It's just, I, I. I don't have much to say on this subject. The next part says Fox will uh, promote probably the October 4th debut as their 20th anniversary. So if you go back, you know SmackDown was 1999. So now we're in 2019. So you know it would be the 20th, and this is kind of where the uh, you know the surprises and the legends and everyone will show up for the debut episode. I'm sure. Right. And this is apparently there was this issue that USA Network wanted the Raw reunion, but everything that, you know, Shawn Michaels, Hulk Hogan, all these people, yeah, they were going to be on SmackDown, the premiere. Uh-huh. So USA is like, eh, 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 we need a little bump over yeah. here. <laughs> Come on, you got to juice. We've been working with you for years. Come on now. Yeah, so now on October 4th, you know, it's not necessarily going to feel as special when Stone Cold, Shawn Michaels, Mick Foley, Hogan, because we'll be like, well, we just saw him on Raw two months right. ago. <laughs> but it could be the move over to Fox. They could use some major production. Who knows? I mean, they could, they're going to be pulling out all the stops. It's a yeah. billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, I think it's I think it's from L.A. So I still say The Rock will be at that one, if not The Raw Reunion. But yeah. uh, the final one is Fox is going to do some big digital thing to kind of uh, like get the product known to them. And that it, <laughs> this is what it says, that they're even going to learn things like insider terms oh my Do we really need fox becoming smart heels. And, yeah you know, right face heels, heels. <laughs> face berry smart schmaz that that botch i don't want to say that's wcw but that go uh, home <laughs> yeah they'll tell them to go home i don't know um i don't know if that's such a good idea kind of keep the executive as executives right and, you know we don't need them you yeah. know saying oh why did you bury kofi last week yeah <laughs> right <laughs> So that just seems a little Was that weird. a squash match? Or? <laughs> and Vince just looks at him. <laughs> Give me my money. Yeah, right. All right, so we're going to end it on our final topic with the Raw reunion show. So do you want me to read everyone announced so far? Well, I'm looking at the file. We might be running out of time. Oh, we might if be get, running out if of you time. Get it to it, if you get to it fast. All right, Alonja <laughs> Blaze, Booker T, Candice Michelle, Christian, Devon, apparently Bubba Ray was asked, but might not be there. DX, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, uh, X-Pac, Road Dog, Eric Bischoff, that'll be weird. Gerald Briscoe, Hulk Hogan, Hurricane Helms, Jerry Lawler, Jimmy Hart, Kelly Kelly, Kevin Nash, Kurt Angle, Lillian Garcia, Mark Henry, Melina, Mick Foley, Pat Patterson, Ric Flair, Rick, Rikishi, Whoa. oh boy, Ron Simmons, Santino Morella, Scott Hall, Sergeant Slaughter, Shawn Michaels, Sid Vicious. Whoa! Steve Austin, of Stone course. Cold himself, who yeah. has a new USA Network show, so right. it makes sense. Of course he's going to be Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. Yeah. Everybody has a price. Speaking of price, the Godfather. And last but not least, the Boogeyman. Yes! <laughs> yes, the Boogeyman. The only thing that would make it better is if Virgil came out with Million Dollar Man. But Hey, Virgil was with, uh, wasn't he with the younger Ted DiBiase for a little bit? Oh, yeah. With uh, Maurice. And oh, was the, he? I don't remember that. I think he actually was. Might have been. Yeah, they actually, whatever. So... 
Of killer. that whole list, is there anyone like surprises you or kind of the boogeyman? <laughs> uh, you know, he always it's pops always up, this, yeah, exactly. Uh, and of course, Hulk Hogan making his return. Hulk Hogan again, kind of popping up here and there. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of surprised Stone Cold, but it makes sense with his USA show Absolutely. because Stone Cold has said he doesn't want to appear unless there's a reason. Well, this is a reason. Um, it may not be on purpose, but Brock Lesnar will apparently be there, and mm-hmm. it hasn't been announced, but we talked about it. If Undertaker will show up. Right. And I do find it interesting that one Bret Hart is not listed. He usually shows up. Remember, right. he did the AEW show. Exactly, presented the title. So this may be a little something there. Who knows? Christian's announced, but not Edge. So I assume, you know, just maybe a conflict with scheduling that right. Edge can't He's make Right, he's a busy it. guy. He's usually at these also, but I don't know. This seems like a pretty packed show. I don't know what they're actually going to do on the show. It'll be interesting. There'll be a lot of people at some point. <laughs> and uh, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were specifically set as Diesel and Razor Ramon. Nice. So that would be cool. Old school Raw. I don't know what the actual reunion is for, but who cares? It'll probably draw a number, and that's It'd what they're great. going for. Yeah, so. they're going for numbers. So any closing thoughts on this podcast? As apparently we're running out of time. <laughs> yeah, we're all right. Oh, come on. <laughs> yep. No, you got it in fact. I just wanted you to go fast. Oh, I see. See how long I can listen? <laughs> yeah. Let's see if you can get it all in one breath. I was going to make a pun there about me being fast, but Holly oh, isn't listening right boy. now. So, hey, 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 hey now. now. Hey, now. Family show. Family show. That's right. Wait, never mind. All right. PG. PG. Okay. So, Holly, closing thoughts. Do you have anything that you want to plug or let anyone know about where they can find you? You can find me wherever you find Justin. There oh, you go. That is truer With than you words. As always. <laughs> <laughs> Joined at the hip. All right. Well, I'm going to get my usual plugs. 411mania.com. I have some pretty good co- columns up there, and the comment section is going nuts right now on me about that. So feel free to join in that fun. You can follow me on Twitter at Justin Watcher. You know all about that. You are listening to the 411 Foresight Wrestling Podcast on the 411 Podcasting Network, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, all that good stuff. Google Play, you know all about that. iTunes, give us five star reviews. We love it. Mr. Steve Matson, what do you got? Hey, we got the Resident Complex available anywhere music is sold. It's our debut album, North Avenue, available on all digital platforms. And you can even find yourself a, a physical copy at cdbaby.com. All righty, then hit that music.